Back in the mid to late 90s, Microsoft was in some serious crap. It was alleged that Microsoft was abusing their power, creating this monopoly on Intel-based personal computers. Because of their bundling of the operating system and web browser and all this crap, it was a pretty good time to hate Microsoft because, well, they were doing some really shady stuff and they were just getting bigger and bigger and squashing a bunch of the little guys. It took years and years for the case to be settled and in the meantime, there was plenty of media attention, all pointing fingers at Microsoft and Bill Gates for one reason or another. One of them being Microsoft Windblows 98, a self-proclaimed unauthorized no-punches-pulled parody released in 1997 by Parity Interactive. Now, these guys only lasted a few years in the mid-90s. They also released some parodies of the game Myst, called Pissed. Star Warped, which is a parody of Star Wars, and The X-Fools, a parody of The X-Files. Yeah. I'd be hard-pressed to call them a game company. You'll see some people call them a games company, or that they made games that they really didn't. I mean, they kind of did, but they didn't. This is, it's not a game. It's a parody program. Not Justice Department approved no political humor. And other side-splitting spoofs of the company, the software, and the man. Side-splitting. Presuming that's from laughter and not from you cutting open your sides just to get rid of the pain of this crap. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Who does he want to own today, he being Bill Gates? Yeah, because he wants to own everything apparently, because he's rich. All these bug-free activities. Bug-free, yeah, uh, Microsoft Windows, it's all buggy and stuff, haha. -ha. Inside the box, you get a basic manual, which doesn't really tell you much of anything. You don't really need to be told anything, it's pretty self-explanatory. And you get the CD, of course, which is it's just a CD. It's, uh, it's not a flower pot, it's not a desk. It is a CD. You'll start Windblows with a window, letting you enter your name so you can save your progress. Of course, this assumes anyone would want to actually come back to it, but I digress. You're then greeted by two Microsoft or Microsoft employees, Graham and Meg, who congratulate you on entering your name, I guess, which has granted you access to the super secret Windblows server. I'm Graham, and this is Meg. Now, why are we whispering? Because we don't want to get into trouble. Well, why didn't we just use fake names? Oh, that would have been a better idea. You are always right. Okay, never mind, never mind. Yes, those kind of jokes pass for laughs in Windblows. And honestly, I could end the video right here because that kind of humor is all you'll get throughout the entire thing. Well, okay, you do get the occasional immature joke, which is kind of funny in passing, almost. Not really, never mind. Then the wind blows desktop appears, and Meg and Graham continue talking until you shut them up. How come the programmers don't let me hang out with them? Well, you never should have thrown out their Coke can sculpture. Seriously, they just keep on going on about stuff that is neither funny or even slightly engaging, so just click on them and make them shut their mouths. So, what can you do here? Well, Wind Blows mostly reminds me of those children's activity centers back in the 90s, where you'd just click on things and listen to the cartoony sound effects and watch the simplistic animations in order to appease the most infantile of minds for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, really. You also get a bill of gachi in the bottom right corner, which is a reference to the Tamagotchi virtual pet games that were so popular back then. You can feed Bill Gates money, slap him on the butt, and that's about it. It doesn't seem to affect much of anything, so who cares? It's more a case of, hey, this guy is famous and this toy is popular. Let's put them together. That'll be hilarious. Uh, to be honest, it's the same with just about everything else, but we'll get to those momentarily. While I wouldn't call Microsoft Windblows 98 a game, it does have quote-unquote games included. The first one is The Roll Ahead, an amalgamation of the name of Bill Gates' book The Road Ahead and What You'll Be Doing in the Game, which is a stupidly simple board game where you can pick either Bill Gates or Steve Jobs to try and roll ahead. You roll the dice and try to get ahead while getting random chance cards based on real-life happenings of Apple and Microsoft. I guess if you're not aware of this stuff, you're not going to get the references. Even if you are aware of it, it's not really amusing. It's just kind of like, oh yeah, that happened. And this rivalry between the two is played up throughout all of Windblows 98. And the thing is, Apple and Microsoft weren't really big competitors at this point. Frick, Microsoft saved Apple from dying by investing $150 million in 1997, the year this was released. And Apple's products were mostly generic crap that were barely even competing in the same market as Microsoft's. 
Maybe this whole rivalry thing might have been slightly more amusing 15 years before or 15 years after, but in 1997, not really. It's more of a case of, hey, these two nerds were famous for competing with computers in the 80s, and now they're competing in a board game, ha ha. The next game is Win Bill Gates' Money, which is slightly ripping off the TV show Win Ben Stein's Money, although it plays more like You Don't Know Jack, where you'll be answering Microsoft and PC industry questions asked by a badly impersonated Steve Jobs. I'm your host, Steve Jobs. Oh, but he's conceited and doesn't like Bill Gates, so it's funny, lol 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 lol. Next game is Pinball, which is the crappiest freaking pinball game I think I've ever played. It doesn't even get a chance to be funny, it's just a pinball game with Microsoft references on it. I mean, the rest of Windblows isn't funny either, but this is seriously not even potentially funny, it's just dumb. Lastly, you have Windblows Exploder, which is the crappiest Space Invaders clone I think I've ever played. You try to shoot down every glitch, bug, and virus that pops out of these error messages using the incredibly clunky mouse controls. It's not fun, it's not funny, and it handles like month old butt. I don't even know what that is or even if it can be a thing, that's how crap it is. Now these games are totally pointless, but believe it or not, there is a goal in Windblows. The desktop shortcuts on the left-hand side of the screen can be accessed in order to be oh so amused by yet more unfunny parodies of Microsoft and stereotypical nerd culture. In Campus Cam, you can watch hidden cameras around the Microsoft campus. You'll enjoy all sorts of hilarious hijinks, like MS employees who have never seen an exercise machine before and think it's an ancient computer. <laughs> hey, I'm getting a display. Yeah, what'd you do? I just stepped on this uh, foot mouse. You know, because nerds never exercise, and the only thing they know is nerd stuff. <laughs> or how about that Microsoft tech support, huh? Yeah, you know, because Stephen Hawking hates those guys. What? Hello, Mr. Hawking. Don't you hello me. You smug little twit. I am headed up to here with your crappy program crashing my computer. You can also watch the MSTV Network, which contains spoofs of 90s TV shows like Baywatch, Touched by an Angel, and Star Trek TNG. Uh, and yes, these are as painful as they sound. Captain PC Card, I have detected an anomaly in our quadrant. Explain. There is an unidentified vessel 22 kilometers off our starboard bow. Hi, uh, this is Captain Andreessen of the SS Netscape. They're not funny, they're not amusing. The artwork is kind of cool, I guess, at least if you like that whole caricature style. Though there is no animation at all, only still frames and awful dialogue. There's also the Reject Bin, which contains ideas that the company rejected for production. Seriously, this, this, this is just, uh, it's, it's mind-numbingly bland. These are just crappy puns and inserting another word into an existing thing, it, it's not even amusing. Buy it now, before we upgrade it again. Biatch. That's bitch in rap lingo. Lastly, and probably least, you can read Bill Gates' email and journal, which contains the same old tired, stupid jokes that permeate the entire rest of the program. He's rich. He's a nerd. Microsoft is a big company. So funny. There's nothing more to see here. So, what is the point of Windblows that I mentioned earlier? Well, once you watch every single dumb video and read every stupid journal entry, you get to decipher punny riddles from the Shaftbox email program in order to unlock even more crappy parodies of crap. Do this six freaking times and you'll finish Windblows 98. As you're congratulated by seeing Meg and Graham being called into Bill Gates' offices and promoted, but not. But they are, but they're really not because Bill Gates is a dick because he's rich and nerdy. Am I right, guys? G guys? Guys? That's it. Game over. What a pile of garbage. I haven't played any of the other parody interactive programs, but if Windblows 98 is any indicator, I, I don't even want to. I just don't. Their idea of parody is running a single gag into the ground. Microsoft is huge and Bill Gates, he's a rich nerd. Yeah. I guess it's technically a parody, but it's certainly not successfully played for comic effect. It's not even slightly clever in pointing out Microsoft's flaws back then, and they were very real. There's no commentary on the antitrust concerns of the time, no real commentary on the supposed bad business practices of the company at all, other than a passing phrase here and there, like, oh yeah, Microsoft is bad, okay? 
practically every joke and jab in the game could be pointed directly towards essentially any other technology company that was huge back then, and there would be no problems, just switch out some names and figures. But Microsoft was the huge media target then, and uh, they had to make their money somehow. It's a complete waste of time. In fact, it knows it. You see that little counter in the bottom right? Yeah, it counts exactly how much time you've wasted, so you'll know and feel awful about it. This program freaking relishes in the fact that it has taken a part of your life away from you that you will never get back. That's amazing. Uh, you want to run with very bad word puns parody interactive? Well, I'll refer to you as fail blows from now on, because having the word win in the title is being far too kind.